Hello, and this is a video of how I am making the clock to go on the cover of my folio for my Halloween project for Renee Bouquets. So I'm using here this spiderweb clock face with the clock hands that come with it, and you have your choice of hands that you want to use. This is the large spiderweb clock. And then I have these little flourishes here. And they come in a set of two, so you need three sets to do the clock. I might use more throughout the folio. I'm not sure yet. Um, I will have a link to all these products in my walkthrough video. And so I'll have a link of the walkthrough video down below in the description box of this video. So this here, I'm just going to show you how I... And making this clock and I want to show you how to do it by hand so that you don't need to have any kind of software program or electronic cutting machine to make this clock you can you can do it on your software program and cut out the chipboard and the paper um, I so I'll give you the measurements so that you can you know design it on your on your program but you don't you don't need to do that and so get started here. The first thing I did was to cut it out on paper. And so the first thing I wanted to make sure that I had the size right was for the sides and that's because I wanted to make sure I could fit the three flourishes down the side. So I cut two pieces at five inches long and one and one eighth inches wide. So that's five inches tall by one and one eighth inches wide. And then I cut a piece that was three and three, or sorry, excuse me, three quarter, so three quarter inches tall and six and one quarter inches wide. So that's three slash four tall and six and one quarter wide, or six and one fourth. And for the top here, I was just going to use my compass to get the arch that I needed or the dome that I needed for the clock. But when I pulled it out, it had the, I have this um, student's math set that I got at Office Depot. And it's by Stadler. Stadler. Anyway, that's the brand right there. And it had this compass in there. And the compass is six inches wide, which is what the clock is. So, and it was the perfect height. So all I needed to do was trace this. If you don't have this compass or can't get access to this compass, I mean protractor, this is a protractor ruler, um, then you could definitely use your, your, um, your compass. Um, or if you're designing it on your program, then really all you need to know is that it's um, that it is six inches wide and it's three a, a little over three inches tall, and you'll just have to play around with it until um, you can get the exact you want an even dome shape here. And so what I did was this this ended up being the perfect shape. So I it has these um, edges right here that stick out. But I wanted to line up this flat edge here against this edge of my brown paper. So I just lined it up here. And then I traced here. And then I traced it here. And then I took my ruler and just finished off that line and just went all the way across here. And then these pieces here, I lined them up just slightly over this line here. And the reason I did that is because I just wanted a really, a really nice smooth transition from the archway straight to the sides. So, you know, it took me a couple times before I got that so it's just, and I've been there. 
um, just a couple times, so, you know, till I got, well, I was happy with it, that I felt like I had a really nice smooth transition with the line down. Then I marked here, and then once I once I had those lines, the one and eighth inch wide, then I was able to take my ruler and just make sure they're straight on my paper, and just and the same thing on the other side. So then I have my straight lines going down the side, and then I just put this up here and just traced around, and then took my ruler and then just made sure that it was all nice and even and straight. And so then I have this design here, which I cut out here. Now before you cut it out, just, just double check and make sure that your dome is, is the size that you need. You don't want it too tall here. You don't want it too shallow here. So make sure that your dome's got a nice even even border around the face of your clock. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, um, so that's it. So then I cut this out, and I recommend if you're doing this by hand, cut it out on, well, either way, I recommend doing it on scratch paper first to make sure it's correct and um, that everything's good and um, and that it fits your, fits your clock face the way you want it to. And then you can trace this out onto your design paper. Now, I'm going to be putting this on chipboard, so I will show you how I am going to do that. And um, by hand, anyway, if you're using your your like your silhouette or something, they have chipboard that you can cut out um, with the right settings on your on your program there so but if you're doing it by hand then again you're going to cut two pieces at one and one eighth by five inches tall then you're going to cut this one three quarter by six and a quarter wide just like we did the paper and um, for the dome I've got this piece here and you're probably thinking what the heck so I'm going to show you what I did here. So I took my chipboard and I lined up the edge of the chipboard to this edge here on this paper that I cut out. And so I lined up the edges. Get that marked up. And then I traced around. And then I cut the excess chipboard off, so you don't want very much excess chipboard. And then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And you can see here I have these lines that I've cut up to the edge of the traced line. And they're about every quarter inch apart. It doesn't have to be exact because this is all, it's just to help you manipulate and cut a round shape on this medium weight chipboard. This isn't this is not the thin stuff, this is the heavier stuff. So um, it has no give if you just try and cut into it without doing these lines. It has no give and it's really difficult to cut into a circle circular pattern. So by cutting these lines when I cut this out they're just gonna fall away as I'm cutting. I don't know if you can see that these pieces are just falling away as I cut them or not. Okay, so now I have my my circular pattern here, or my dome shape, and so then I have my chipboard piece that will go on my cover. Now before I put it on the cover, I I need to um, I 
I need to put the paper on. So if you want, you can just cut a, a one single piece of paper from your, I'm gonna scroll back out again. Uh, you can cut out a single piece of design paper like this here with whatever design paper you choose and then glue it on all the chipboard or you can you know turn it over and glue your chipboard on like that if it's easier um, to glue it this way but anyways but anyway you want to glue the front on first and that's just in case you want to ink your edges and so on um, so you're going to ink all your edges and and do whatever you need to do to get this on here good and even. And then you're going to turn it over and then glue. You want a piece of paper in the center of your clock here, the back of the clock. So whatever piece of paper that you choose to put on that you want sticking up, you're going to glue it when it's turned over on the back you're going to glue it face down. So I think I might, I don't think I'm going to use this paper, but just say I, I'm going to use this paper, I would glue it face down like that so that when I turn it over this this side is showing up through the center. And then I have um, a piece, uh, a quarter inch, one quarter inch wide and it's about three and a half inches. I don't know if it's going to stay three and a half. I, I'm going to be gluing, um, you know, some kind of circular design here or onto chipboard. But I'm, I might use, um, I might use a sticker from the collection, or I might just do a circle and put a spider on it. I haven't decided yet. So, anyway, once I figured out how. I don't want it to be too low, so I might have to adjust the height on this, if depending on the size of my my little pendulum piece that's going on the bottom. And then, and then before I glue, once I've got all my my cover paper on, and I've got my my paper in the back. Once everything's on, then I can. Then I can glue my clock down, and then I will glue this in place. And then before I put the face on, I'm going to be spray painting all these pieces in black. So I sprayed a couple of them here, and I will put a description in the description box the type of spray paint I used, but just any regular spray paint should work fine. Um, and I just sprayed from all different all four sides as I was spraying so that I could make sure that all these little inside pieces were covered with paint. And I'm going to go over with the second coat just, just in case there's any little spots that got missed. And it's just nice to have a second coat. Um, don't, don't spray too thick or too close. It'll You don't want it to be yucky. Um, and then uh, once those are all spray painted, they'll go on. The, I'll put those on the cover. And then I'm going to be spray painting this also. But, um, and then after, uh, depending on whether you're going to trace this or, or just, this is a three and a half inch. Let me just make sure. I believe it's a three and a half inch. Yeah, three and a half inch circle. So with your circle cutter, you can cut out a piece of paper that's three and a half round. Or if you don't have a circle cutter, just trace it and cut it. And you could use an X-Acto knife to make sure you get any edges showing off your off your paper. But I'm going to probably use this spiderweb paper for my background. And of course, this will be spray painted black, so I think it'll, it'll look like cobwebs are in my clock. I'm hoping that's kind of the look I'm going for. If it's too busy, I might use a one of their solid patterns, Authentic. I'm using the Authentic uh, Twilight paper for this um, Halloween folio. Um, if I think the spider web paper is too busy, then I will go ahead and and use a solid. But I, I think it'll be okay with the spider web showing behind it. 
And so then once that paper's glued on to the back, then I will glue the entire thing. And I'm uh, and I'm going to only be gluing, you know, half the clock, the top half so that it's just it'll be sticking up so that this pendulum will fit behind it. And just make sure you got an even even space here when you glue it down. And and then I will spray paint the hands and glue those down. And I may or may not, I don't really think I need to, but I may or may not put a little centerpiece there onto the hands, but we'll see. So that's that's how I made my clock, um, or I'm making my clock. Obviously, I haven't made it yet, but that's how I'm going to do it. And so you'll see it on the cover. Like I said, I'll put a link to the um, walkthrough below in the description box below so that you can refer to that the whole entire project and I will I will have a description of the or li and links to the products that I'm using in that walkthrough video and and you can see the entire thing on how I did it and I will do a tutorial on the actual folio I will do a separate video for that so that's my that's my clock. If you have any questions, please message me and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, thank you for watching. Bye.